This thought that you need to have your life figured out at this age is laughable. This thought that we've created in society that 18 or 22 you need to know and you go, it's like we've literally built society backwards. Like when you first get out of the school machine which maps zero to real life, you're supposed to go play real life to have a chance to figure out what you do. So I mean, where do you start? You start with what are you consuming and paying attention to when you have leisure time? Do you play video games? Do you listen to music? Do you like to go out and eat weird food? Do you, like, what do you like? That's where you start. So what do you like, Ahmed? Like, what are you about? Um, I, I kind of have, like, I'm kind of a geek. I, I like to do, like, comic books. Good, let's start with comic books. Do you want to create comic books? Do you want to sell comic books? Do you want to buy comic books and flip them? Do you want to work at Comic-Con? All of those things would be a good place for you to start cold email and DM 850 different people that are players in the comic book world and one of them might reply to you and that starts your career. Like you could literally work for Funko tomorrow. You could literally work for Marvel tomorrow. You could. You just have to write 137 compelling emails and DMs and LinkedIn things. What's up brother? Yeah, bro, you can literally do that. How, who's, who's 43 and older? We couldn't do that, Ahmed. <laughs> That's not how it worked when we were coming up the game. You didn't just like say, like, we, you know, that actually ironically, once in a while I come across an OG who's like, actually I did do that. I wrote 800 letters. It took two months for me to get a response <laughs> instead of two hours. But yeah, man, I mean like, you know, in the comic world, there's the movie aspect. There's the actual skill of it. Like if you go, like if you like the drawing of it, You could, look, let me tell you one thing about winners. A lot of winners didn't get there by accident. So when you write a winner an email, your favorite illustrator at DC Comics, hey Sarah, I will bring you coffee, get your laundry, grind and bleed just to intern or work at minimum wage just to see how you do it, one out of every hundred of those people, that's how I hire, I hired D-Rock because he emailed me three times. And now he's D-Rock and people like call their video people D-Rock. <laughs> when I was five, it was not necessarily that my parents, we were very poor and immigrants, but I still thought it was more fun to go shovel people's driveways when it snowed than build a snowman because I wanted a dollar. That was my chemicals. Then I was conditioned because when I was 11 and said, mom, everyone's getting Nintendo, she said, great, go buy it. I was like, all right, gotta go to work. You know, like, so, for you, potentially, it's the complete opposite, which is amazing. Maybe you didn't have those chemicals, and then on top of it, you had the great fortune, and there's nothing wrong with that. We, none of us picked our paths where you were fed. So, yeah, it's probably more unlikely that you wanna go and grind it at zero and build something for yourself and deal with all the fear and anxiety and loneliness and grind and dirt and blood that comes along with being an entrepreneur not the popping bottles and flying in private jet entrepreneurs that you see on Instagram that are completely full of shit. Sorry, Jim. (laughs) Notice when I said to him that he has to reach out to 137 people. People come at me and they're like, Gary, I wanted to be a sports agent and I tried really hard. I'm like, cool. Barry, how did you go? He's like, well, I, I submitted to three places. I'm like, three? Like, yes, there are gatekeepers for certain jobs potentially for you to taste. There's also 7,000 of them. So A, have you asked all 7,000? That's A. B, in the world of content creation and zero startup costs, one could potentially, if they can afford to, one of the reasons, it's funny that we're segueing off the garage sale thing. One of the, like, one of the things I tell a lot of people is like, get a job at 7-Eleven or do garage selling just to maintain your lowest possible cost of living so you can start the thing that makes you happy. And to your point at 25, like seven years from now, you'll be 32 years old. Do you know how young 32 years old is? Ugh, anyway. (laughs) If you are a vibrant, active, ambitious human being, which there is zero reason for you to be at this conference if you're not, Zero. And you do not, for yourself or your company, produce in the ballpark of seven to 25 different pieces of content across three to nine different platforms a day, 
you are making a fundamental mistake. And I'm gonna say it again, because when you're talking about 25 pieces of content a day, in a world where 98% of this room is not making 25 pieces of content a year, we have a very big disconnect between where I sit on this and where you sit on this. I am giving this talk for one reason, because DRock is filming it, and I'm gonna air it in a decade on whatever the current platform is when it has been completely accepted that everything I just said was 100% right. I have zero interest of you actually taking the advice I just shared. I don't know you. I've got my own problems. I prefer it. I deeply, I can't, you know, I have to go, I'm speaking at Harvard tomorrow, so I have to go. I have a couple more meetings here and I gotta go Dallas to Boston. I land at 1.40 in the morning and on those kind of flights, I like reading the emails of you saying, hey, I saw you in Mobile in 2020, it's now imaginary 2023, I, I finally listened, I, I was passionate about X, Y, and Z, I did do an Instagram account or a podcast or a YouTube show, and now three years later, this happened. I love that. That is the big win for me in this room. Uh, but you won't. You won't. And I know that because I've lived this life now for a while. You know, what is more likely is you're gonna email me in six years and say, I wish I did, because this happened. Because I was the leading lawyer in town and this other person who didn't, who's not even, you know, the emails are funny, right? Gary, I mean, they come in all shapes and forms. Gary, I wish I listened to you. And you start reading it, because I read because I want the qualitative feedback to learn, right? Heard you four years ago at the Atlanta Business Summit. You said the thing. I didn't believe you, I thought you were loud and obnoxious. I'm not cursing today because Nagy asked me, but you cursed, it turned me off. <laughs> I'm a Jersey boy. You know, uh, you know, meanwhile, this upstart kid, he listened to you, and then my favorite line, in every, no matter what it is, lawyer, doctor, real estate, but he's not even good at being a lawyer, but he's killing it on Facebook and he's hurting my business, what do I do now? And I smile. I smile the same way that I saw some of the kids on the field yesterday that didn't go with Vayner Sports, that we know we were in the final two with them and they went in a different direction. I see them, I root for them. I'm a kind person, my mom did a good job, but I'd be lying to you if I didn't say when I look at their faces I smile knowing they made the wrong decision. Because I love merit, I love sports. You either make the right move or you don't. I've already won by articulating my thoughts here today. Either you're gonna actually use this talk as the final piece to actually get out there and finally do this because you cannot be in this room and not know what I'm saying is actually right. Or you're not, and then you lose, and then I get to see you, because they're both good. I did it or I didn't do it. I both enjoy, because I actually love the merit of the game. I mean that. So, I hope you do it. I don't need you to do it. As a matter of fact, I'll get really technical on you. A lot of my smartest friends always ask me why I do this because if these people start making content and start running ads, it's gonna be harder for you to build what you're building, Gary, and they're right. The feed of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's just one feed. It's just supply and demand. If all of you start posting, that's just more content, less attention, less opportunity for me to build what I'm building. That's where it's going, so I hope I've articulated the punchline. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to be doing Q&A now, but to be very frank, I don't, I, I gave Nagy the no cursing, I'm taking the Q&A, so I'm gonna take a couple of your questions right now. <laughs> uh, because to be frank, I think I've articulated my point. And, and it is the point. Uh, we have, we, if you do any, if, you know, I was a terrible student, but there was one class I was decent at, it was called history. And I finally figured out why. I like history because I know that things repeat themselves and humans are consistent. And I like context. If you listen to my talk right now and immediately ran home and read a book or articles about the transition of America from the radio to the television, everything I just said would make sense to you. My friends, we have transitioned from the newspaper and television to the internet. It's happened. It's not going back. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. It has happened. It's never going back. This is why 
the mainstream media will always be wrong about their predictions because they look at the wrong data. They will always be wrong. Watch it again, they'll always be wrong. It's why big companies, why my company's exploding because they worked with other agencies from like the Mad Men era, they're always wrong. It's based on subjectivity, politics, ego. We're here. I want you to take advantage of it because if you don't, somebody else will. You guys know nothing about my personal life. I post a trillion pieces of content, but I, dr- I put it in my professional world. People was like, Gary, I don't want to do it on private. I'm like, you don't even know what my kids look like. I'm like, I know what your kids look like, and you're private, but you've already posted them six times on your bullshit Facebook. <laughs> so, I found it very easy. I guess when I'm coaching clients, you know, I always find that they find this artificial world almost too much for them to. This is, my point of view is that it's not the artificial world that's too much, it's the world, period. They're incapable of judgment. So if they're appeasing people on Instagram, that's fine. They're appeasing people in real life too. That's why they're leasing a Lexus that they can't afford because they want people to think they're successful. People are fronting 24-7, 365 because they're insecure. And if you're insecure, getting off of Instagram is not gonna help you. Why don't we take the conversation up a notch and talk about why you care about your neighbor's opinion or your mom's opinion. Why? So I understand where you're going, that's great. And I, honestly, I think it will be a huge trend. I think we're gonna use technology so much more than now that there is an, incre- you know, the world always swings. I think there'll be incredible businesses. I think there'll be incredible. <laughs> I think there'll be incredible businesses of detox centers where you go to the woods for four days. Like I've, I've actually been doing a lot of work lately. I've never been into buying real estate, but I've started the process of looking at major cities and seeing what the most rural one hour drive is and what the cost of the real estate is because I feel like buying a bunch of trees an hour outside of like any major city that is, literally has no cell service is like a good business in 10 years because people are gonna want it for three days or a week, that's great. But there's a much bigger issue at hand, which is are you capable in dealing with other people's opinions? 99% are not. That is because of the last 30 to 50 years of parenting, DNA, and many other variables, and that is why I'm so passionate about the things I talk about. Because when you get quiet, and it comes in both forms, the biggest breakthrough I think I've said that I like almost as the consumer of me is if you can't hear the cheering, you can't hear the booing. I'm sure for a lot of you that have no idea who I am or haven't seen me before, you've seen people come up today and give me some nice compliments in my impact. I don't hear that in the same way that I don't hear somebody saying I'm full of crap or a snake oil salesman. I keep it not too high, not too low. And that's helped me quite a bit. And I think the reason people struggle is You love Instagram when they say you look real pretty, but you hate it when they say you're ugly. You love it when they say that's fresh, but you hate it when you see somebody else having a fresh time and you're at home. People are getting too high and too low, and so we need to have conversations with ourselves. Limiting our time on TikTok's not gonna do it. I think it's not smart to put yourself into a jail. You saying to yourself, I'm gonna do this in three to five years is gonna lead to anxiety. Do it in 12 months, do it in 12 years. Oh, by the way, it all depends on what the arbitrage is. You might realize after a year, wait a minute, why would I open a restaurant where the leases are too expensive? I wanna open up nine more trucks. Stay fluid, don't create a North Star. Here's what you focus on. Let me bring this Tex-Mex delicious food to these kids and then let me react to what happens. If that leads to a location, great. If that leads to 13 more, Food trucks, great. If that leads to a big company coming in and making, trying to turn it into a national chain or a product that's sold by a frozen food company, keep it open because a lot of people at their young stage make these arbitrary decisions. Of three to five years I'm gonna do that, they actually stick to that and then they don't see all the other opportunity because they're on this narrow thing that a lot of times ends up not being the right thing.